to Ruminations on Jet Space Magazine. I'm Marita. I'm Ryan. And we're here to serve, spill, and sip all the tea from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9, Episode 11. 11. I know! 11. We're what? almost there, y'all. We're seriously almost there. <sighs> I mean, when I've had like 11 dates, it's like pretty much a marriage. It's a done deal yeah. at that so. point. What's 11 dates? <laughs> mini challenge mini challenge we finally got it back i'm so excited for this this yeah. has been missing yeah it was a fun one too mm -hmm. we had pup tree of the drag queen mm. and this is a tried and true mini challenge that graces us every season yes and i'm never sick of it nope because we mm -hmm. really get to hear the reads from all the queens yeah. in such a whimsical, fun way. Where they get to hide behind puppets so it's not out like they're actually saying it. Right, like, touch me on the doll where she read you. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite performance in the puppetry? Peppermint. Mm. I Okay, here's the thing, is that I think Peppermint has so much talent and is so great, and when she's on, I want to cheer for her so hard like yes. Like, yes peppermint do it do it and she just was funny the whole time like my notes just say funny i love that she sprayed alexis green <laughs> genius yes. that was genius it was so good where did she get that green spray paint probably definitely from alexis michelle's wardrobe bag mm -hmm. yoink or from my hair bag there you go hair bag, Your hair bag. <laughs> my bag made of hair i don't leave anywhere without my hair bag <laughs> How about you? Uh, I also have your hair bag. Uh, cool. I have a bag full cool. of your hair. Mm -hmm. But performance-wise, right? <laughs> oh, I see. My favorite performance was Sasha. She was so funny. She leaned in real hard yeah. to Trinity. And the way she designed the puppet alone, hilarious. Completely nude with little pasties on the nipples and mm -hmm. then like one strip of wallpaper <laughs> for the tuck. Genius. And her jokes were on yes. point, like the horseplay. I mean, horseplay. Her, also her southern accent mm -hmm. was hilarious. But the horseplay part, throwing Nina under the bus, mm -hmm. and then the couch play. The couch play. Oh. I just think, too, like, from a comedic standpoint, like, Sasha's approach was very concise. Like, she was like, okay, what are the things that are going to get the heart, like, the hardest hits, the biggest laughs for Trinity Taylor? Her relationship with surgery and modifying her body for drag and how much she talks about sex. Mm. Let's just go there. So she went. She nailed it. Mm -hmm. It was very concise, edited, and on point. Boom. I sometimes wish I could be. What? Concise, edited, <laughs> on point. <laughs> Honey darling, we got the gayest ball ever. I've been waiting nine seasons for this. Finally, and it went to VH1. It's ironic that this happened when it went off logo. True. But Drag Race delivered the gayest ball ever. And I lived for it every moment, mm -hmm. beginning to end. Mm -hmm. So we had three different runways that the queens all had to do. And that's a lot. That's asking a lot mm -hmm. of these queens. I'm sure they did not give them very much time. We had Rainbow She Better Do, Sexy Unicorn. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And we had village people, eleganza extravaganza. Yeah. A little fur just came off of my unicorn. Marita. What? I see you came prepared. Who is your favorite rainbow runway look? My favorite rainbow runway look came from Sasha Velour. Mm. Mm-hmm. The house down, if you will. Yes. She just, I mean... I get that they, like, some of the queens in Untucked or whatevs were talking about how it's, like, it wasn't really rainbow. She just had some colors. But, like, what? here's the thing. You can bend the rules if you do it fucking well. And she did. She did. She had a tiny house on her head. And she's just so expressive on the runway. I just, like, just anytime she's on the runway, I'm like, what? And she made pretty much everything that she wears. Yes. Which is incredible. I just think she's always so creative and thinking about like how to make something very Sasha Velour. And I thought she delivered. 
How about you? It's beautiful. Yeah. I lived for Peppermint's rainbow look. Yes. It just served pride yeah. up and down, left and right, through mm -hmm. and through. Mm -hmm. I saw her and I just got so nostalgic for pride every year and what it means. She had this beautiful kind of like unitard thing going on with the boots mm -hmm. and this amazing blue wig. And then the rainbow was kind of an accent, just an afterthought, but it was draped over her body, kind of toga-ish. And I just lived for it. Gorgeous. That was an example of how to do like a classic rainbow look well and tastefully juxtaposed against Alexis Michelle's bought straight off the rack at the costume display store. She looked like a P-flag mom who had like originally told her kids they were going to hell for being gay mm. and then she was overcompensating. So she went to... And then wrapped herself in a gay picnic tablecloth. And mismatched it with a bandana that she wrapped over her hair. Yeah. How do you mismatch a rainbow? Now we know it's possible. Thanks for teaching us that the impossible is possible, Alexis Michelle. Namaste. Mm. Challenge number two from the gayest ball ever was sexy unicorn. Yeah. Unicorn. 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 You know who my favorite sexy unicorn look was? Who? Ryan Crawford. Why? Look at you, sexy unicorn. I'm a unicorn. <laughs> well, for you. Anyway, but for real, my sexy unicorn look from the show was uh, Shea Kue. Yes. Just killing it in that all black ensemble. Mm. Midnight beauty. With those. Thigh high boots. Were they thigh high? Were they knee high? They were high. They were those high, high, high boots. To quench my thirst. Mm. And those little hooves. Hooves. I didn't know that I was attracted to hooves. And the shake away <laughs> came out. Do you say hooves or hoofs? Hooves. Hooves? Hooves. It behooves you to say hooves. Now I know I want to be hooved. <laughs> yeah, Hoover. Oh. No, I just thought Shay's look was like sexy, which was the name of the challenge. Was sexy unicorn. <laughs> you know? Like she came out and I thought of sex. So like good job, Shay Kule. It was very BDSM meets like the last unicorn. Mmm. A la Rankin Bass. I don't know the words you're saying. Don't you worry. Somebody mm -hmm. in the comments will. Great. Right? My favorite unicorn had to be Sasha. I'm sorry, the Bobby. minute you start a conversation with, I was inspired by medieval tapestries, I'm wet already. <laughs> like, I'm sold. Whatever you're selling me, it's mine. Mm. And it had blood at the tip. Oh, I should have put blood at the tip of mine too. I'm not a very violent person. Mm. And I'm not gonna pull I a Kathy Griffin right tip. now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So Sasha was great. It was legitimately great though. Yes. And it was beautifully executed with the unicorn accents, the blending of the powder on her head mm. and her gloves, mm, ate it up. And then children, we mm. learned it takes a village and we got some sensational books. Ooh. I was gagging over Shay's construction worker. Yeah. That was a patchwork jacket that I would see on a runway Seriously? in Milan if I could afford runways or Milan. <laughs> it was incredible. It and really was. The boots, the glittery boots. Mm -hmm. She had the head wrap scarf and a construction hat on top of that, plus the gold lip. Ugh. Delightful. Mm -hmm. Killed it. Who was your favorite? My favorite was Sasha Velour, mm, big surprise, yes. as the cowgirl. Because I think like you could go super like kitschy and just like ride out on a dumb wooden horse or something and like put on cowboy boots and whatever. But like she did her Sasha thing and she A wore a fierce red wig. She looked so good in that red wig. Mm -hmm. And then chose this really cute print that conveyed cowgirlness, but wasn't 
tacky. It was and just this, fashion. This Erica Badu slash Pharrell hat, which is very in right now, brought it. And the cowskin gloves, mm-hmm. which were half, they were two tone. It was like red on the bottom and cowskin on the top. Mm. Man. Yeah. She killed it. She really did. I thought it was interesting in Untucked when they were talking about, or was it the Rue and the judges that were talking about her look being more fashion than drag? I think that's an interesting conversation in general. For a ball. They critiqued her Mm. for not being ball enough. It wasn't too ballish. And they critiqued Shay for not being rainbow enough in her original look, which was gag worthy. Yes. Front and back. But... They were both kind of neck and neck at that point. Mm-hmm. I lived for Sasha's look, though. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So good. She could lasso me any day. So the moment it was announced that it was the village people eleganza, extravaganza. What was going through your mind? I was like, dear God, please don't do the Native American character. <laughs> like, why? There's actually a sixth character that is like a military man. Yeah. Like a Marine or something. I think it was an army uniform. We don't know. Something. Something. But like, Something that wasn't a race of people. Mm-hmm. But instead fell in line with the rest of the characters, which are either professions or an interest, right? Yes. This is also not the first time that Native Americans have been like the mm. butt of a joke in this season. And we learned it in this episode when Trinity was talking about her look. Right. When she had what seemed like a generic indigenous look. And she said in Untucked this week... This was my Indian look. Right. You were totally right. You were totally right. And it turns out that she was trying to be tribal. She was. Without being appropriate at all or reverent. Well, and here's the thing with this challenge. It's like, you know, I felt disappointed with like the producers or Rue for for choosing this character. But really, Alexis, if she chose to, could have been taken it in such a different direction. Right? Like she could have just dressed up as any other human or done a different profession and then been like, yeah, I'm a Native American because Native Americans are doctors also. You know, whatever. Like, just taking it there. Um, But instead she made a dream catcher earring and stuff. And a fucking bow. bow, bow, Like, the bow in her hair. (laughs) Literal bow. (sighs) It was, and the wig. I'm sorry. Like, that was, like, borderline minstrelsy. Minstrelsy. <laughs> Minstrelsy. That is a word. I'm not making this up. Oh, Minstrelsy. I thought you were talking about a menstrual cup for a second. <laughs> <laughs> this is literal OB, you guys. Yeah. Literal diva. Literal. No, it was just, it was so inappropriate. And it was really like, I, I could see how this would actually be really hurtful to people. I mean, and the I, context of like, Standing Rock has been, you know, it's like, there, Jesus. there's a lot of awareness around Native Americans and how we need to stand with Native Americans in this moment. And right. yet this show is like, here, dress up like an Indian, but we're going to say Native American so that it's more politically correct. Like, and then I'm okay. going to Coachella and I'm going to down a six pack. Oh, woo. Yeah. It's 2017. Like, show some respect and don't make your costume a person. Yep. Period. And Looks like we've got our reading glasses on. Must be time for Read of the Week. (laughs) Ryan, tell me about your read. I said with such gusto. Speaking of Alexis, Michelle, that was very accusatory. Mm -hmm. Your hands also look real big when you do that to the camera. Speaking of Alexis, (laughs) Michelle. Speaking of Alexis, Michelle, uh, I loved Sasha's read of Alexis's Mm -hmm. outfit in Untucked because... Let's face it, we were all thinking this Ugh. when she said, when Alexis was like, I actually take the two of you picking me as a compliment because I think y'all know that I'm fierce competition and it would be convenient to get rid of me tonight. <laughs> uh, no. And then Sasha quickly corrected her honestly and politely and said, I just want to say, I mean, I'm glad that you, you, you are a fierce competition. You are sickening. I love you. I, this is not my favorite outfit. Accurate. It's a table runner. The bodice was interesting. I liked that she put so much work into the stoning of it. But she made a mistake that I probably would have made too. 
truth be told, if I were on that show. I would have focused so much detail and so much time and attention on one mm. piece of the garment that I would have forgotten about the entire rest of the outfit. Mm. And Alexis is an amazing seamstress. So I was kind of disappointed that this just didn't shine through. She could have done better. She just doesn't have any taste. Mm. She's basic AF. Even when, like, and she doesn't pick up on any of the clues. Like RuPaul's coming around and like asking about their outfits and Alexis is like, I found these, this bowl of turquoise stones. Turquoise, if you will. Turquoise, and I'm going to build my entire look around it. And Ru was like, uh-huh. And then she blames everybody else. She when... called everyone else shady whores for not giving her advice again. We've already talked about that. Yeah. Not their job. Heck, get better taste. Yeah, take a class. Mm. Okay. Who was your read of the week? My read of the week was, interestingly enough, also about Alexis, but it came from Miss Shea Coulee mm. um, in a little confessional with the camera when she said, I feel like I could go to New York and throw a stone and hit five other queens that can do exactly what she does. Ba, 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 ba. Right? And maybe not wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It was just spot on. It was like, yeah, Alexis is going home. Amazing theater queen, but she has to be told what dance moves to do, what songs to sing, it taking other folks' platform and then delivering it on stage. That's her real talent. And mm -hmm. she does an incredible job at it. Mm -hmm. But from originality and from vision, it's just not her strong suit. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. It's time for time, the money shot. Money, money, money shot. 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 Remix. Who was your money shot? Ah, uh, my money shot was for sure RuPaul given the little tutorial of rhythmic gymnastics with that ribbon. It was so good. So funny. Just, it was like Rue's been like hiding a secret talent for decades. Well, she started as a club kid, right? Like yeah, in the yeah, 80s, yeah. she was a go go boy and everything. Yeah. So this is no stranger. Those balls. Mm -hmm. Those balls, darling. Yeah. Category is ribbon dancer realness. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should bring ribbons on stage when I go go dance at Night Crush this that is month for Pride. Always. The You're go go dancing for yeah. Pride? Yeah. I'm there. Oh my God, yes, that is the answer, bring Duh. ribbons. Yeah, but no, RuPaul was for sure my money shot because she just showed them how it was done. Mm -hmm. And then she like humped a circle. I know, she, she was created. like a little hip action, it was real good. She still got it. Mm-hmm. Nailed it. Ryan Crawford. Yes. Tell me about your money shot. My money shot mm. happened to be mm. Pepper Munch. What? She was incredible mm. in this lip sync. And I thought perhaps that Peppermint gave us everything she had in mm. the first lip sync that she did. And I was worried that she didn't have any new tricks up her sleeve. Mm. <laughs> and then she took off that wig mm -hmm. in her BDSM leather dominatrix mm -hmm. gown and did some goddamn Janet Jackson choreo. We did not even plan it. <laughs> And she killed it. She did that shuffle before, but she did it like three times as well in this new lip sync. And she got out of the boneyard. Mm -hmm. You know that little corner mm -hmm. of the runway where everybody was just dying off? Sorry, Charlie. Sorry, Nina. All those others. She crossed right over and she killed it. it. That was my money shot because it made me happy. Yes. Mm. She also does such a good job at like flirting with the judges. Like she yeah. just made this great eye contact when she got down on that stage and was like looking at them. Mm. And I was like, okay, all uh, right, Peppermint, I see you. And even at the, like to the very end, she performed to the very end when she did her little bow. And then as she came up, she did a little tongue flick and was like, like that. I was yes. like, ah! To Macho Man, yep. the trans woman on the show yes. is singing to Macho Man mm -hmm. and Knocked it out of the park. Absolutely. Did it better than I think anybody else might have done yes. in this lip sync. Just completely pepped it up. You know what, viewers? We just really love you. 
We do. And we want to talk to you. So thanks for giving us some questions. We're going to answer one now. Cuddle in close.、Mm. Daniel May. That's the definition of calligraphed. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel May asks us. Enjoying your ruminations, guys. My question for you, Colin. It seems that we're all noticing changes to the show now that it's on VH1. What's the most questionable slash concerning difference you've seen, and what should the show do to correct it this season?、Mm-hmm. Excellent question, Daniel. And we appreciate it. Yeah. First of all, where are the many challenges? Now that it's gone to VH1, I feel like we're missing the many challenges. They're pressed for time, and for some reason, they're cutting that part out. Right. And I miss seeing the queens、yeah. and their comedic performances in those. What other differences? Yeah, and just the, like the breadth of performance that you can get with having a mini challenge every time.、Yeah. You know? Yeah. I I mean, definitely the after school special. Like every episode. Every episode, and I just I think what I don't love about it is that it feels manufactured.、Like、That's it, the thing. It feels like, of course, these queens are going to talk about something meaningful. From time to time, but are we really going to hit that specific thing and have a big production of a conversation in the workroom in your robes every time? Are we really going to have an apology from a person who then is obviously going home? Like just kind of predictable patterns of heavy producership that you're like,、ah. exactly. Somebody's telling them, "Hey guys, start this conversation、right. now," and then they do, and then they do, and then it's. I mean, it's edifying. Like we learn from it, sure, but. You can just smell it a mile away that it's forced. True, yeah. Also, the there have been some runways that have been so clipped short that I don't get to see、mm-hmm. what the actual looks are.、Mm-hmm. I feel like that may be new. Right. That might have happened before, but it's at least standing out this year that it's gone to VH1.、Yeah. And I don't know that I'm going to blame VH1 for this, but I will say. Until we saw Trinity and Peppermint do their lip syncs in the bottom two,、uh-huh. these lip syncs have been、oh. overwhelmingly disappointing compared to past seasons. I agree. So maybe not a fault of the producers.、Mm-hmm. I will put this on the talent themselves.、Sure. But yeah, that's been another big kind of difference this season.、Yeah. That's what happens when you cast people based on Instagram followers alone. Well, and it's like if you're gonna overproduce and manufacture an after-school special discussion. You could, after the first horrible lip sync, go to your queens and be like, "Hey, you got to step it up because lip sync for your life is a big deal. Like, maybe work harder next time. You know, like manufacture that. Manufacture the quality of the performances rather than like, blah blah blah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Besides the performances, that I I miss the variety of them happening. You know what else I miss from my、mm. Pearl's Drag Race?、Mm. The naked men. Pit crew. Pit crew. Where are they? Where are you, crew? Where are you and all your beefy muscles?、Mm. You know.、Mm-hmm. They just have, they've been on what like two episodes, like not very many episodes, and, and maybe like two of them, like and a little untucked mm-hmm. exposure, mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah, I miss them. It's just a fun part of the show is the interaction with the pit crew and the queens. Agreed. Yeah. It also seems like this season, at least they've been able to bump up the production value. So、yeah. better video, better audio, better lighting,、mm-hmm. all of that good stuff. That's great. Yep.、Yeah. And hello, Gaga. We got Gaga in the first episode.、Right. So that's a wonderful improvement, and we've all been waiting for that moment. So there's been some good things too.、Sure. I just I kind of miss some of the nostalgic pieces、mm-hmm. as well. And I mean, I think it's great that it's probably reaching a, a larger audience in some ways, like being on VH1 versus Logo. But also, like, I love a queer, like a queers only kind of space too. So,、mm-hmm. yeah, it's the double edged sword, right? You want the exposure as well, but then it feels like it's diluted、mm-hmm. with other people. Cool. Thanks, VH1. See you later. We love you, Daniel. This episode has been brought to you by Power Ups, creating lovingly handcrafted quartz. Pendants, necklaces, and bracelets to adorn anybody and everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on Jet Space Magazine for Ruminations. I'm Marita. I'm Ryan. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and send us all your questions in the comments. We love you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Adios. Why did we both do that? <laughs> <laughs>